first question that we're tackling today is um, best practices for migrate for integrating Pardot with WordPress. Um, so there's a couple of things to take into consideration first. The first thing is the level of Pardot that you have. Uh, so to find out where that is, and we're using this Pardot Lightning app. Um, uh, this is the, the newest version of Pardot. So we recommend you, you be on the Lightning version. Um, our demo is prepared for that, um, is understanding what level of account that you have. And you can always view that by clicking into the Pardot settings section, and you can see the account type here. So this is our demo account because we are Pardot partners and we train folks, um, they give us access to the advanced edition, which is one of the higher up levels with the fancy stuff in it. The only thing that we can't do with this demo environment is actually send any emails. Um, but the first thing that you're going to want to do is check to see what level you have. Um, there was an update that happened to Pardot at the beginning of this year uh, where the deprecated or depreciated, people call it different things, the login with Pardot. So for a very long time, like in your and my world, Liz, we would go through and we would set up users inside of Pardot. They would log into Pardot separate from Salesforce. Beginning of this year, um, they axed that. So now there's no accessing Pardot un unless you access it through Salesforce. And what that did to a lot of users, and I think this we're getting asked this question because of that change, um, is it changed the way that the Pardot WordPress plugin works. So the Pardot WordPress plugin is um, downloadable in the WordPress uh, marketplace, um, and it's a plugin that's designed to quickly connect Pardot with WordPress. Um, for forever, it didn't matter what level of Pardot you had. You can go in here, um, install the application or install the plugin. Um, there's an there's an authentication type, so it's still here. You can see the login with Pardot. This no longer works because that piece is taken away. So in the new world that we live in in 2021, lots of fun, lots of changes. You can only connect this thing through the Pardot SSO. Now, some of the other challenges with that. This is the question that comes up probably more than anything else is, well, now our, our plugin stops working. So if you are on growth edition, which is that entry level to Pardot, um, unfortunately, this plugin no longer, no longer works. It's not that big of a deal. And what I'll do next is walk you through why it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but if you did install this and you are on growth and you're having difficulty getting things to authenticate, um, it is because in the new world, this application requires um, it, uh, plus or advanced or ultimate. Now, the reason it requires that is because this is now using the Pardot API. So one of the cool things about the advanced Pardot um, levels is you get additional uh, API requests on the Pardot side. This is a separate set of API calls from like your regular Salesforce account. And when you have it enabled, that's how Pardot is able to, to integrate with WordPress. Now, if you're not on that level um, of, uh, of having a Pardot API enabled and this is no longer working for you, don't worry because you still have options of getting Pardot working with your WordPress. One of the one of the things that we can do is you can kind of hack your themes um, so you can go to your theme editor if you're confident doing this now i'm going to go with one of the trickier things that I know works because i've done it for a long time. And when you go to your theme editor now this might be really slow okay yep you can see some of these issues here they give you some warnings. If you go to the footer PHP or header PHP section they will give us a location where we can add some JavaScript, add some code. So you can see right here in the div class, you can copy your um, you can copy your Pardot code, and I'll show you where that is here in a second, into one of these sections here, and it's just like adding that Pardot code um, to every page of your WordPress theme. So it's a little bit of a technical solution. I'm gonna show you another easier way to do that next, but I wanted to lead with this because if you're comfortable with this, it is probably the quickest and easiest way to get that Pardot tracking code working. Um, and I'm not gonna go through with all of this right now because on this site, we actually already have uh, the Pardot code set up through the connector here. Um, but where we find that code again is, um, and let's cover that too. So what we also recommend doing is uh, in your Pardot settings, this is another new feature of this year um, that that maybe uh, is an issue for some folks that aren't aware of it. 
uh, Pardot has created this thing called first party tracking. Now, when you turn on this first party tracking, um, you get an upgraded version of your Pardot tracking code. Traditionally, you would go into here and you would type in Pardot campaigns. You'd go to this Pardot campaigns page and you would find your best campaign ever. You'd have your, yep, so he's giving us a warning. It doesn't even want us to go here. You'd view your tracking code here. You would copy this thing and then this is your tracking code. In the new world with the first party tracking, what it does, and I'll also explain why it's doing this, is you actually go to this domain management and then you can see the sample domain I have in here. This is a fun one, brandon.marketing. It was, it was fun to buy that one. Um, you've got your tracking code generator down here. And the big thing is notice here this line, the PI host name is go.brandon.marketing. And then this JavaScript right down here is referencing this variable. So these things up here in the JavaScript world, and I know this is a Pardot AMA, but just to give you some JavaScript uh, context, this is what's called a variable. And so what happens is we set the variables up here. This is the ID, this is the host name. Um, and the host name gets used down here to see where uh, this script is actually loading this website. The reason why this first party tracking thing has been invented is a popular trend amongst web browsers. And when I'm talking about web browsers, we're talking about uh, Chrome, Safari, um, Microsoft Edge used to be Internet Explorer. They are getting more strict around tools that are collecting information of internet browsers. So in the old day, this PI host name would always be pi.par.com. It wasn't that big of an issue, but with some of the more recent security releases, um, what ended up happening or what can end up happening is if this is go.par.com, and let's say you're hosting this at uh, brandon.marketing or uh, cypresslearning.academy or cypresslearning.com, the web browser is going to see, oh, there's some script that's trying to load in the background. This this page, HTTPS, go.par.com is trying to load. That is not Brandon.marketing. So we're going to protect our users and block that script from running. So when you turn first party on, what we're doing is we're kind of tricking the browsers to thinking that this file here lives at the same domain as our website. So if this is going to be on, if this is going to be a tracking code that lives on cypresslearning.com, then uh, we're going to want to have our tracking code be at Cypress, uh, cypresslearning.com or go.cypresslearning.com. Same thing with Brandon Mark, brandon.marketing. So um, the idea is you take this code here, you take this JavaScript, and then you can put it in your script, you could put it in your theme somewhere. So somewhere in the bottom of, of the script um, and find a section where you've got um, like a div because the div means that it's going to be HTML. So that's one way of doing it. It's a little bit of a technical solution, but what that will do is it will replace one piece of what that plugin does, which is just installing uh, the plugin on, on every page. Um, another way, probably an easier way, if you're not a, a technical person, you're not comfortable um, going through code, uh, and I don't have an example really here to show you, but that is using a, a tool called Google Tag Manager. And from Google Tag Manager, um, it's a way where you install this Tag Manager once. There's lots of plugins that are uh, available for WordPress that gets Google Tag Manager working with your WordPress site. And what your Tag Manager is, let's see, I could probably, that's probably okay for me to sign in here. What your Tag Manager is, is it's a, it's a container, it's a little script that allows you to manage um, a lot of different scripts. So you can see some of the other tools that we're using. We've got, we're using Google Analytics through this thing called Tag Manager. Uh, we use this tool called Drift. It's, it's a chat bot, basically. Hotjar is another tool that allows us to track like you know, clicks on certain areas of our site. And we've also got Pardot. Um, so with Google Tag Manager, we use a single script. Um, we can install it. There's a lot of themes that'll install it automatically on your WordPress site for free, similar to what the um, uh, Pardot plugin will do, is we can use this Tag Manager to control um, what scripts run. So you can see, same thing here. Now this is on our Cypress Learning site here. Um, and what we're doing is we're triggering this on all pages and we're having it fire automatically. Now with Google Tag Manager, what's nice is you can control different triggers. So this is just on a page view, or we can say only fire this if somebody scrolls. Um, one of the really cool things about Tag Manager also is you can have um, one of your options be clicking on an element. Uh, so in the world of like California Consumer Protection Acts and GDPR uh, where 
consent is really important. Um, some of the things that you can do with Tag Manager that's nice is rather than just having your Pardot code uh, execute on a page view, um, we can have it wait until um, someone clicks on a link or um, someone scrolls to a portion of a page. Really nice feature of Google Tag Manager. I'm not going to change anything in here right now. Um, but that's another way of getting that tracking code added to your WordPress site. So now you only have to add the code once and it's going to just work across all your pages of your WordPress site. And it's a and it's a it's a tip, it's a trick for not needing to um, upgrade to that next level of, of Pardot. So I'll pause there and see if we had any, any additional questions come back in from there.